Yeah. 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 Welcome to this section on the live coding section. We are going to build a web page from scratch. We're going to learn the best practices of HTML and CSS. So, yeah, we have our speaker here with us today. He is a Odeko Maya. Sorry, I'm not to ask as well. She, okay, let me just say she. So, he's going to be He's going to be here today to explain to us and also to. Oh, sorry, you're not hearing me properly. Sorry. Okay, so he's going to be here today to explain to us and to try and uh, talk about HTML. What exactly is HTML and what do we need to know about it? So, yeah. Are you there? So I'm here. Yeah. I'm right here. I can hear you. Yeah, you can take over. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's nice to be here. Uh, the way the meeting is designed is, is in such a way that it's designed for every single person. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Let me get a feedback. And let me show my face for a minute. Yes, I'll so I, we can hear you. If I turn yes, it back on. All right. So the way the course is designed to go is such that even if this is your first time coding, you've never done anything about coding before, this is your first time hearing about programming, you would still get something out of the course. Okay. So that's the way. Thank you very much. Uh, you'd love to see my face all through. Wow. Uh, I can't guarantee that because I also need to share the screen. Well, as much as I can, I would, I would do. So, like I was saying earlier, the course is designed in such a way that every single person, regardless of you know, your background, whether it's, you're coming from a programming background or not, you are still going to get something out of this meeting. Uh, I'd like to request from the host if they will permit me to share the screen. I'm not sure if that is. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, we can. We can share it. Beautiful. Sure. Beautiful. So this is this is basically what we are here for. I had to talk about HTML and CSS. But these three guys are oftentimes together. And to truly explain what all this is about, before I go fully into this, I'd like us to do something very shortly. I'll show us what we are going to be taking throughout today. So the first thing I'm going to take is a disclaimer, okay? Uh, this is not all that there is to HTML and CSS. This is not all that there is to web programming. This is just an introductory course or an introductory class. Of course, we can't take all that there is to web development in, in three days, unless you're willing to stay for maybe about 12 to 13 hours a day, then maybe we can. But for these few periods that we have with each other, uh, what you're going to be getting is just an introduction. And I believe this is, this is very important, this is very powerful because studies have shown over the years that when you understand why a thing exists, and how a thing exists, then it's easier for you to learn about that thing. When you understand why a thing exists and what the purpose of that thing is, then it's easier for you to understand that thing. And that's what we're about to, to bring to you today. The next thing we have for you is something called text editor or text editors. Now, a text editor, how many of us are, I'd like some responses once in a while so that I'll be sure I'm not speaking to myself. How many of us are familiar with uh, Microsoft Word? We've all used Microsoft Word before, right? Yeah, sure. Mm. Okay. Sure. So the same way you have Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is, is an application that is designed for, you know, writing letters, writing essays, just typing out stuff. That's the same way you have a text editor. The difference is that a text editor is designed, it's an environment that is designed for you to write codes. I'll come again. 
while Microsoft Word is designed for you to type letters, to write essays, you know, to write books, the text editor is an environment that is designed for you to type in codes, to type in codes. Uh, there are lots of text editors, but they do the same thing. So whatever kind of code you write into this one will also work quite well with any other one. For the purpose of this class, if we all have our pieces, I would prefer that we all use the same text editor, which is Visual Studio Code. If you want to download Visual Studio Code, just go to code.visualstudio.com slash download. I'm going to share it in the chat in case we need access to it. I just did. So code.visualstudio.code slash download. Depending on the operating system you are using, you should have something like this. So I'll open this up in my browser and you should have something like this. So if you are using Windows, go ahead, download the installer for Windows. If you are using Linux distribution, then this will work fine for you. If you are running on a Mac OS, then this will run fine for you. So for you to be able to write codes at all, you need a text editor. So go ahead and download that while we talk about other things. So once you are done downloading, ensure that you install too. So download and install. So while you are downloading and installing, we'll talk. Talk about some important things before we get into coding. So I believe we would have done all that there is. We would have downloaded our text. Now, I said we're going to come back to that illustration, trying to find the illustration. This one, this one right here. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are I'll permit me to speak your about for this for this purpose. Uh, I'm not sure I can even speak it very very well, but there's a proverb, more like a proverb in Yoruba that says that arometa or kinda something something. All right. What that simply means is that these three guys are very very important when it comes to designing websites and designing web applications. I'll come again. These three guys are the most important things when it comes to designing websites and web applications. Which brings me to what is a website and what is a web application. Now, a website oftentimes contains static information. What do I mean by static information? So your website can contain text, your website can contain images, it can contain videos, but it really doesn't do much more than that. A beautiful example of this is wikipedia.com. Uh, www.wikipedia.org, apparently. If you go to Wikipedia for the very first time and you type the word fish, what you are going to get is some piece of text. So you get some text, you get pictures, sometimes maybe even links to videos, right? But that's all that there is. If another person, so let's say we have Shola as one of the participants. If Shola goes to wikipedia.com and types fish, Shola sees the exact same information. So those informations are static. They are there now, and then they show the same way for everybody else. They show the same way for everybody else. So if you go to a static website whereby you just have things like home, about, contact us, those informations don't change at any point in time. They don't react differently to different people. That's what a website is. A website just contains static information. So your text, your images, your videos, and things like that. A web application, on the other hand, is something like Jumia jumia.com.ng. So you know how that some of our lecturers in school, we dare not call them Mr. So if you say Mr. Odeshola, for example, the eyes that they used to look at you, you feel like, let me just bury myself. They'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Mr. So to say, I have a PhD, I have a master's, you can call me, you can call me doctor. 
So it's very, very wrong for you to call a site like Jumia a website. Jumia is what you call a web application. Why is this? Now, if I come on Jumia for the very first time and I add an item to my cart. So let's add this, I'm looking for an item. Let's add this body lotion to my cart. So I add this to my cart. And this information is dynamic in nature. What do I mean by dynamic in nature? My cart is different from your cart, isn't it? Your cart is different from somebody else's cart. It's still the same jumia.com.ng, but different information is showing for different people. Ah, uh, Mr. or Miss Ayomide, can I hear you? You raised your hand. Did you want to share something with us, Mr. or Miss Ayomide? Sorry, you please. If, if you have a question, you should just type it in the comments um, section. Thank you. Okay. All right. That would be great. Okay. Thank you very much. So as I was saying, you have dynamic information. So my cat is different from Mr. Odisholas cat. Uh, Mr. Odisholas cat is different from Mr. Sholas cat. And that's where interactivity begins to happen. What do I mean by interactivity or interaction, so to say? Depending on the interaction I have on Jumia, that's what is going to display to me. So if somebody adds a bag to their cart, it shows a bag. If somebody adds body lotion, it shows body lotion for that person. Dynamic information. So it's showing different information for different people. Beyond this, watch very closely. This pack of lotion costs 4,000. If I say, okay, apparently they're only allowing me to order one of it. But I ordered three of these already in my cart. If I add one more, now the price increases. Look at that, 29,992. Let me add one more. So it should be somewhere around 35 or 36. Wonderful. 36,482. There is a little bit of calculation that is going on. So it's multiplying each item, the price of each item by the number that they are ordering for. All of those things are things that you do not find in a website. They are things that you find in a web application. A web application seems to have a brain of its own. We'll still talk more when we get to JavaScript. But a web application seems to have a brain of its own to become interactive, to become interactive. Are you all with me? Did, did we get that? Did that make sense to, to us? Yes, it does. Okay. okay. All right. So we get a bit of interactivity if it's a web application. Now, beyond these, there are types of applications that are called native applications. Native applications. So here, I think I wrote it down. Yes. Websites, we've talked about websites, we've talked about web applications, and now we are moving on to native applications. Now, native applications, are, we've all heard of the word when they say your native language. It means, you know, that language is particular to that tribe. So whenever they see that tribe, they expect a type of language from you. That's the same way native applications are. Native applications are particular to the operating systems where you are using them. What do I mean by this? I can have the Chrome application, the Chrome browser on my Android phone. I can also have it installed on my PC. That is my Windows computer. But the Chrome browser that I have on my Android phone is different from the one I have on my PC. How do I know this? Anytime I'm about to install Chrome on my Android phone, it shows .apk, the file extension is .apk. I hope you're all aware of that. But if you want to install on the PC, it's .exe. So every operating system has different applications that can run in their environment. Those kind of applications are called native applications. So Microsoft Office, for example, is a native application. One of the characteristics of native applications is that you have to install them for them to work on whatever device that you're using. You have to install native applications for them to work. 
on the device, unlike web applications. Web applications can run on any device as long as it has a web browser. A very beautiful description, or how do I put this? Yes, we can compare native application and web application with a software like Microsoft Word. I'm sure we're all familiar with Microsoft Word. So you allow, Microsoft Word allows you to type in text, to type in letters, essays, things like that. It's a native application that you have to install on your PC. Google Docs, on the other hand, is a web application. They both do the same thing. So it doesn't mean that because it's a native application, it has higher functionality. Both Google Docs and Microsoft Word do the exact same thing. The difference between both is that one is installed on your PC, the other one runs on a web browser. So that's the major difference between a web application and a native application. Do we get that? Are you all with me? Yes, we're with you, sir. Right on. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So, how does HTML, CSS, and JavaScript come into all this? I explained earlier that HTML, JavaScript, and CSS are what allows us to be able to build web applications and websites, web applications and websites. Now, what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. I'm going to write that down. Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext Markup Language. Now, Hypertext Markup Language, or in other words, HTML, is the markup language in which your website and your web applications are written. It's a markup language in which your website and your web applications are written. In other words, HTML is what brings about the structure of your web applications. And that's why I like this illustration. If you look at it, HTML is represented as a skeleton here. All right, so every, every human being has a skeleton. It would be weird if I don't have a skeleton right now. In fact, I won't be able to stand straight. I won't be able to take this class if I did not have a skeleton. You may not see the skeleton itself, all right? So unless maybe I have a cut that is so deep that is revealing my bones, uh, you may not see the skeleton, but it's a very integral part of your body. In fact, it is on your skeleton that everything else is laid out. So if you study a bit of biology, you know that it's on your skeleton that your muscles are laid out, your skin, your veins, your arteries, all of them still depend on your skeleton. All of them depend on your skeleton. And while it may not look so beautiful, it's a very important part of your body. So your HTML is what is responsible for the structure of your website or your web application, the structure of your website or your web application. And another illustration you can use for this is an uncompleted building, all right? An uncompleted building doesn't exactly look so fine, but then if you don't have that structure, there's nothing for you to pour your paint on, right? You can't just throw the paint in the air and you know, if out comes a beautiful house, no, it doesn't work that way. You need a form of structure then you can now begin to design on that structure. Now, moving on to CSS. Your CSS is what you call cascading style sheets. CSS, cascading style sheet. Now, your cascading style sheet is what is responsible for, let's just speak one word from this style, is what is responsible for the style of, your web page or your web application, the styling of your web page and your web application. What do I mean by styling? When it comes to things like color, when it comes to things like alignment, when it comes to things like positioning, you want your web page to be to look this type of way. You want your navbar to go this type of way to stay here. When they scroll down, it follows it. Things like that. Any form of styling is done by your CSS. Any form of styling is done by your CSS. 
the combination of both your HTML and CSS can build you very beautiful websites. Very, very beautiful websites. In fact, there is almost no website you cannot build with HTML and CSS alone because you already have your styling and you have your structure. Now, moving on to JavaScript. JavaScript can be seen as the brain of your web application. Remember, I, I explained earlier the difference between a website and a web application. A website is static, oftentimes. A web application allows you to be to do a bit of interaction. So if you look at this, this image right here, that guy is not just standing here. The guy is moving on his skate. So there's a bit of interaction. It's JavaScript that gives you that kind of power. They call it superpower. That's the superpower behind your, your web application. It can also serve as the brain of your web application. So notice how that when I went to Jumia the other time, and let's say on Jumia, an item costs 10,000 Naira. If you say you want to add three of it to the cart, that's going to be 30,000 Naira, right? So who is doing all of those calculations? Is it that there's somebody working at Jumia, and then anytime you say three of it, the person brings out the calculator, makes the calculation, and then sends the response no that would be very stressful now imagine you have thousands or millions of people using that site at the same time well uh i believe one day the the workers of jumia will just quit and say i can't do this no more I'm tired of calculating things but thank god for javascript javascript can handle all of those calculations so javascript understands when you say two times two he understands i supposed to be four so that can be like the brain of the web application. But this entire course is focused on just HTML and CSS, HTML and CSS. The next thing we have to discuss on our schedule is initialization. So by now, I believe that we should have installed a text editor, either VS Code or any text editor you prefer. There are lots of them. There's VS Code, Sublime Text, uh, Spider, um, Genie. Genie is also a text editor. Atom, lots of text editors. But whatever you do, in fact, this notepad I'm using is a text editor. So a while back, some people had to use this notepad to code. But thank God for Visual Studio Code. It makes life much easier. So if you have Visual Studio Code installed, then we can make use of it. Before we do that, we're going to attempt to create a folder. So you can come to your desktop, anywhere on your PC, your desktop, your documents, your downloads, anywhere you prefer. You're going to create a new folder. So I'm going to select new folder. And for the purpose of this course, I'm going to name it GDG, did I get that right? Google Developer Group, yes. GDG, I think HTML. GDG in HTML. Now, what's the purpose of creating this folder? I just want all my HTML files to be in one place. That's the purpose. It's not, it's not really significant, but I want all my HTML files to be in one place. You can name yours just HTML. You can name it HTML class. You can name it anything that you want, but I'm going to name mine GDG HTML. Once you are done with this, just Keep in mind where you opened that folder, where you created that folder. Mine is created in the desktop, so that's fine. The next thing you want to do is open up your text editor. So in my case, I'm going to search right here for Visual Studio Code. So once you have it installed, you have Visual Studio Code. I'll double click. And wait patiently for it to load up. So my Visual Studio Code is loading, it's booting. All right. Now for you, if it's your very first time, you're not going to get all of this, but because it's not my first time using Visual Studio Code and I have some files that have been opened beforehand, 
it just automatically opened them for me. So I'm going to close them so that we can do this from afresh. So let's wait for this to respond. Beautiful. All right. So you're not going to have this. Don't be scared. It's fine. Absolutely fine. And this is because it's your first time. Sometimes he asks you, do you want to trust the authors? Just say, yes, I trust. I agree. It's not like we ever read the terms and conditions when we do these things. But if you want to see the folder, that folder that we created, just come here to file, right here, at the top left corner, you're going to see file. Click on file, and then click on open folder. Click on file, and click on open folder. Once I do that, it's going to ask me, where do you want, which folder do you want me to open? So I'm going to go to desktop. Remember, I created my own folder in desktop. If you created in documents, then you have to look for it in documents. But I created mine in desktop. So I'll go to desktop and I'll attempt to search for the name of that file. I named it GDG. Yes, so that's the file, GDG HTML. I'm going to click on it and I'll select that folder. So like I said, for some of you, it's going to ask questions like, do you trust the authors, blah, blah, blah. Just say, yes, I do. I trust the authors. And you should have a clean slate. You should have a clean slate like this. Let me increase my brightness. All right. Now we are ready to do business. So we want to create all the files, all the SML files we want to use inside of this folder. To create a new HTML file, I've explained what HTML is. You come here, right here on this icon that says new file, new file. I'm going to click on this icon that says new file. And it should bring up a form of impute box. Here is where I'm going to define the name of the HTML file. So here I'm going to type in index.html. Index.html. Now you can decide to name your HTML file anything that you want. It doesn't matter. Okay. But by convention, your first your landing page, they call it the landing page. The first page that your users visit on your website should be index.html. If this .html is weird to you, well, it shouldn't be, it's called an extension name. Every file on your computer has an extension name. A song, for example, has .mp3. Some videos have .mp4. That is how the computer recognizes, oh, this is supposed to be a song not a video, this is supposed to be a video, not an HTML file. So if you want your computer to recognize that this is an HTML file, then you have to specify the .html, which is the extension name. And then you go ahead to press enter, enter. Now, I want us to pay attention to something. I'm going to increase the font a little bit. See this right here. These guys that look like greater than and uh, less than, they're called angle brackets anyway. But in HTML, these guys are very important. In fact, you can't write HTML without these guys. In HTML, they are called tags. In HTML, they are called tags. And then we are going to use them to build an HTML file, to write an HTML file. Now, this is where the coding, the coding starts. Before we begin coding, we want to do something called initialization. Initialization. We want to do something called initialization. Now, what is initialization? So if, so pardon me again, if, if you're not from Nigeria, and you're not familiar with this food, but if for adventure I want to eat lunch and my lunch is supposed to be Amala and Ewedu and Begiri with Fuku, Shaki, roundabout, 
her body, all of those things together. And they bring that to me that here is your land. The very first thing I'm going to do is not dip my hand into the food and start eating. I know some of us here will do that. That's not right. What you're supposed to do first is wash your hands, right? So that process of washing your hands, what you're doing is you're initializing your hands for food. You're initializing your hands for food. Uh, Mr. Mikto, where, where did you get lost? You can reply so I can try to pick up some things for you. So, like I said earlier, if they bring that plate of food to you, you, the first thing you should do is not dip your hands into the food. Don't be, don't be a dirty someone. Wash your hands first before you eat the food. So that process of washing your hands is what you call initialization. The process of washing your hands is what you call initialization. So to initialize this HTML page, there are two major ways. You can have an exclamation mark. You can have an exclamation mark. And then when you type an exclamation mark, it attempts to autocomplete for you. You should be familiar with autocomplete. So on your phone, you are trying to type the word hospital and you type HOS. The moment you do that, your phone suggests the word hospital to you. You just tap and then it autocompletes for you. That's the beauty of VS Code. You get a whole lot of things autocompleted for you. So you don't have to type everything out. So now, if I type in exclamation mark, and then I want to autocomplete. I can either click directly on this first one, either I click directly on it, or I press the enter button, or I press the tab button on my keyboard. You either click on it, press the enter button, or press the tab button. So I'm going to click on it. And voila, I'm going to collapse this. You don't have to, but so that I can have much space. With just an exclamation mark, we've written 12 lines of code. Isn't that amazing? Just an exclamation mark. So oh, thank you very much, Mr. Dolako. With just an exclamation mark, we've written 12 lines of code. You can, you can add to your CV now. Just add to your CV and write HTML developer. You have been able to generate 12 lines of code. Now, this may look scary if this is your first time writing this, but trust me, you get very, very familiar with it in no time. Uh, I mentioned these angle brackets the other time, and then I call them tags, tags. And if you notice, these tags are everywhere. Everywhere you see them, everywhere. Now, the concept of these tags is this. Every element, every HTML element is made up of an opening tag and a closing tag. Now, technically not every, but about 90% of HTML elements is made up of an open tag and a closing tag. This is an example. So look at this title element. You have the open tag, you have the closing tag. Open tag, closing tag. So the rule basically is, it's more like what goes up must, let just say what goes up must, yes, what goes up must come down. So if you have an open tag, it must also, it must also close. Although this is just for 90% of the elements. Some of the elements are, we like call them hoodlums. They refuse to follow these rules. But most of the elements work this way. So they have an open tag and then they have a closing, a closing tag. The same one with all of these. So look at this, the head. He has an opening tag here, and then he has a closing tag here. The body has an opening tag here, and it closes right here. This HTML opens here, and it closes here. I want us to do something very quickly. I want us to highlight from the open head. This time, I know you are drawing on, on our screen. Are drawing on our screen. Uh, we can highlight from the open head. So remember, okay, before I go into that, let me just show you which one is open and which one is closed. 
So to differentiate between open, ed, open tags and closing tags, just watch very closely. This is the open title tag. This is the closing title tag. Do you notice a difference? Yes, this is the difference, this slash. This forward slash is what makes the difference between an open tag and a closing tag, just the slash. So they look the same, but the difference is this slash. Now, I want us to do something very quickly. We'll highlight from the open head to the close body. So just select and highlight from the open head to the close body. And then you press the tab button, T-A-B. You press the tab button, just like this. What you have just done is called indentation. I'm going to undo this and do it again. For some of us, they may, they may have missed that. From the open head to the close body. So open head, this is where the body is closing. Press tab. What you have just done is called indentation. What you have just done is called indentation. Now, indentation is not compulsory, but it makes your code look a lot neater it makes it look a lot neater and by indenting now it makes some things become more obvious to us just look at this very closely look at the open head and the closing head all of these other guys are inside of it can we see that if you check the open body and the closing body there's nothing inside right but then the html where is opening and where is closing it means all of these other guys are inside of that HTML element. This is what you call nesting. Nesting simply means they can be inside of each other. So the way I have my open head here, there can be other elements that are nested inside of this singular element. That's what nesting simply is. There can be other elements that are nested inside of this singular element. Do we understand? Are we are we following? I need a response. I've not I've not heard somebody else's voice. Mr. Emily wants you to explain nesting again. You just oh, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Yes, nesting. That's that's the correct spelling. N e s t i n g. Nesting just simply means when you have something inside of each other. So look, after we indented it, watch this head is opening here and is closing here, right? all of these other guys are inside of it. So it means that an element can be inside of another element. And even an element can be inside of another element. So all of these elements are inside of this head element. I hope you understand better now, Mr. O, Miss Ayominde. All of these elements are inside of the head element. And that's what you call nesting. You can have elements inside of each other. If you look closely at this HTML element too, this is where it's opening, right? This is where it's closing. All of these other guys are inside of it. That's the concept of nesting. You're welcome. That's the concept of nesting in HTML. So you can have other elements inside of each other. Uh, so I said this is our HTML page. Let's attempt to check it out. What does this HTML page look like? Now, if this is your first time using VS Code, for us to be able to update this code, we need to save. So if it's Microsoft Word 2, you know you need to save. If you close it and then it's not saved, well, you can auto save anyway. But if you close it and it's not saved, it's the previous version that you have. We can quickly do a couple of settings, okay? So I want us to auto save. You come here to settings, this icon right here is called manage so that we don't have to save this every single time. Normally, if we don't turn on our auto save, it means that we have to do control S to save every single time we make a change. Every single time we make a change, we do control S, control S. So come to manage, click on settings right here. And then you come into a place that says search settings. Just save, search for auto save auto save once you see auto save you see files auto save set it to after delay 
So there's no on. By default, yours will be off. Hello? By default, yours will be off. Set it to after delay. What does this delay mean? Well, you can actually check what the delay is. It's 1,000 milliseconds. So after every second, it auto saves. After every second, it auto saves. I believe that's pretty fast. We may not even necessarily notice it, but this is a life lifesaver. So every single time we don't have to do control S, control S, control S to save. We, we can just simply auto save. There's another quick setting I want us to do. Maybe we don't do it now because we won't realize the relevance. So let's hold on for it. So once we are done with these settings, you've turned it to auto save, just close, okay? And then we are back here. So we know that this is saved. So how do we open this on a browser? Remember, I mentioned that HTML is the markup language that you use to write websites or web applications. So how do we see what we've written on a web browser? How do we see what we've written on the web browser? Well, there are a couple of ways you can go about this. You can go back to that desktop, the desktop folder. So come to your file explorer and then go to that desktop folder. Then that GDG, I finish CML. Yours may be different, but whatever you named that folder, just open it and you can find the index.html here. The index.html. Now, if this is your first time coding, your PC may not recognize that you should open an HTML file with a web browser. So if you double click on it, it, it may ask you questions like, what do you want to use? So open this, just select any web browser. You can use Chrome, you can use Edge, you can use Firefox. But to open this page, you need a web browser. So I'm going to double click on this and mine is going to open with Chrome by default. And voila, we have an empty page. We have an empty page. And of course, we should expect to have an empty page because we didn't type anything. We just initialized it. But I want us to pay attention to something. Notice this document that is here. Can you see this document? Can we? I believe we can. This document that is here is actually the title inside of your code. So if I open my VS code, I'll notice documents. Can you, can you see that? Document. Document. I can change this to reflect whatever it is I want. So for adventure, you are trying to design a Google page. You can change this to Google, okay? You can change this to Google and it's on auto save. So I don't have to do control S to save. If I go back to my browser and I need to check the update, I have to reload. I have to reload. And the moment I reload, this should have changed from documents to something else. So let me close my other tabs. So we don't, we don't get distracted by them. I think we may still need this. Okay, so I have this, I'm back on this. So can you see this has changed to Google? I don't know if some of us can, but this has changed to Google. I hope it has for us too. Yes, we can. Soon. Okay. All right, so this has changed to Google. And what did we do? We just simply changed the title here. So it's the title that is responsible for this top part that is showing. It's just simply the title of your site, the title of the site you are trying to build or the web application you are trying to build. Now, if you want anything to show on the page, apart from, you know, this title is actually not on the page. It's part of the bar. This top bar that is there is not on the page. This is the page, blank, empty, white canvas. And the earth was void. So our page is void at the moment. We need to start filling it with things. We need to say things like, let there be light so that we can have other things on our page. So to do that, we do that inside of the body. Now, don't be scared of this head and body. It's not, it's not something for you to be scared of. If it's your very first time, you may wonder what is head, what is body. 
Ah, uh, it's nothing for you to be scared of. You all have your head and you all have your body, right? And the beauty of it is that what should go in the head should not be in the body. That's just what it means. So there are some things that belong to the head. There are some things that belong to the body. So imagine during this entire conversation, my leg was actually somewhere around here on my head. That would be very weird, right? So that's the basic concepts behind the head and the body. So you have some things that belong to the head. You have some things that belong to the body. Now we are going to look at very, very common HTML elements. Very, very common HTML elements. So everything you're going to write in HTML are just basically elements. Uh, the first set of elements we'll be looking at are called header tags. Header tags, so H-E-D-E-R, header tags. Now your header tags ranges from H1 to H6. Your header tags ranges from H1 to H6. Maybe I project my, my on-screen keyboard so some of us can see as I'm typing. So your header tag starts from H1 to H6. Now, the beauty of this is that some of us are already thinking, do I have to type all of these angle brackets for my code to work? Well, you don't. Visual Studio Code has autocomplete built-in. So I'll just type some things and then Visual Studio Code will help me with the rest. So we can start with the H1 element. I just type H1. Can you see that? Just type H1. And remember, I told us to autocomplete is either we click on this directly or we press enter button or we press the tab button. We can click on this directly or we press the enter button or we press the tab button. So I'm going to choose to click on this. I'm going to choose to click on this. So see that we didn't have to type all of this angle bracket. The auto completed it for us. We didn't have to type any of this. It just auto completed it for us. Now, if I want something to display using these header tags, I need to put them in between the open tag and the closing tag, the same way we have the title. So this Google that we wanted to show on the page, we kept it in between the open tag and the closing tag. So if we wanted to type something here, it should be in between the open tag and the closing tag. So let's type hello world. You can type anything that you want, it's your choice. Just can be LOSHE, just can be Odeshola, the Lapo. Anything that you want. Mine is going to be LO World. Now let's check this back on our page. I'm going to go back to the browser and to see it reflect, I'll just reload. Okay, see that. I'll just reload so that it updates the current version. Can we? I believe you can all see this. Hello world. Hello world. Yours might be much smaller. I actually enlarged this so that we can see we can see much better. Uh, is there any issues? Is anyone having any issues with this? Let me get response at this time. I want I want to pause for a bit, just in case maybe you're confused about something. Something is not working fine. I can get feedback from you, so you can reply through the chats. You can unmute. So I can hear you for like a minute or two before I continue. All right, I'm with you. Okay, thank you very much for the feedback. So if it's if it's if you're getting it, just respond in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you can get it, you can respond in the chat. You can also unmute for a minute just to speak. So I can be sure we are we are all on the right track. Okay, so just before Mr. Shea continues, I would like to say that if you successfully printed um, "Hello World" on your on your on your computer on your PC, just know that you can print anything. <laughs> When it comes to web development, you, I mean, you, I mean, this is the best place to start from. 
Not that you printed a low word means that you can actually do anything on the web. So congratulations on that. Congratulations. Yeah, I wish I had you know clapping um, effect sound effect, but you get. <laughs> So if you can type a word, just go ahead and add it to your CV. And you can write HTML now. Yeah, That's you fine. Can. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you you will yes. go from there anyway. <laughs> of course. So H1 to H6, they are called EDA. Yes, they are called the EDA elements. EDA elements. Sometimes they are called edits, really. Uh, if you have any questions before we continue, I don't, I don't mind. Also, yes, I don't mind. So, congratulations to us all. We've been able to type "Hello World." Beautiful. Uh, let's try out some of the other header tags. So it's not just H1. So if you want to go to the next line of code, you can come right to the end here and press Enter. To the next line of code, just come to the end of that code, press enter on the next line of code. I remember the other time I said you are from H1 to H6, so I can use H2. And I'm simply going to copy and paste this because what is programming without copy and paste, right? <laughs> so to, to make repetitive things much easier, you are permitted to copy and paste something. So enter. I have H3, I'm also pasting hello world, H4, hello world, H5, hello world, and H6. Still the same words. Notice I'm not changing anything about the words. You can do whatever you want with it, but I'm not. I'm not changing anything. Yeah. So I have from H1 to H6, beautiful. And they all contain hello world. So let me see this on my page. I just go back to my browser and reload. So we have a bunch of hello worlds. We have a bunch of hello worlds. But notice something. In this life, there are some hello worlds that are bigger than some hello worlds. The concept behind Ada tags is such that H1 is the biggest. H6 is the smallest. Now, what's the purpose of header tags? You know how that if you are typing a letter or an essay, there's usually one part that is usually bolder than the others, right? So maybe you have the title of your letter, for example, is usually much bolder than the others. So if you want to have a form of bold effect, depending on the size you want, you can choose your, there's a name for it. I can't remember. But you can choose, I don't, I don't want to use the word poison, but you can choose your poison depending on which one you want to use, either H1 from H1 to H6, depending on the size you want to use. So let's say you have a huge topic, the main topic, you can use H1 for it. So if you have like a sub topic, you can use H4, whatever it is that you're trying to do, you will know which one to use. Okay, so the discretion of picking from H1 to H6 is left to you. Is left to you, but it makes sense that if you have like a major topic, it should be much bigger. And then if you have a subtopics, is is something much smaller. It's something much smaller. I believe we should be good to go. I'm going to go back to my VS Code. H1 to H6, beautiful. Now there are other tags apart from H1 to H6. There is something you call the paragraph tag. The paragraph tag is denoted by, yes, basically, the H1 to H6 just determines the size of the font. Technically, yes. Technically, no. If you need a large header, then you can go with H1. If you need something much smaller, you can go with H4 or H5. So the font size for all of these have been predetermined. It's not left to you. They have been predetermined by the people that wrote HTML. So they've decided that this is going to be the font size for H1, this is going to be for H2, this is going to be for H3, H4, and so on. So depending on, on the one you want to use, you can go ahead and make use of it. Now, beyond the header tags, there's something you call the paragraph tag. The paragraph tag is denoted by AP. 
P for precious, a P. Now you can type in anything you want into this. So I can say this is a paragraph. You'll be surprised that it's not the paragraph you're expecting that you're going to see. Paragraph, if I will spell that correctly. Paragraph. So let's see what this paragraph tag does. I'm going to reload. Voila, it's just a regular text. <laughs> it's just a regular text. It doesn't, it's nothing fancy, but if you want this kind of text, then you use a paragraph tag. It doesn't give you like a paragraph or a form of indentation before your words. It just, it just gives you like a form of regular text. It just gives you a form of regular text. Somebody please help me share the YouTube link. Somebody is asking from the chat. You can share with the person. So peradventure the person came in late. So if you are joining this late and you are lost, which is absolutely fine, just join on YouTube and rewind, go back in time to when we started the whole class. It will make more sense to you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is what the paragraph tag looks like, okay? Let's try out another tag. You have the bold tag. So if you want to make a text, you want to write a text that is bold, you use the bold tag. I can say this, I'll just type in anything inside. This is a bold text. This is a bold text. This is a bold text, okay? And if I reload, I have, you see that? This is like doing control B in, in Microsoft Word. It's like doing control B in Microsoft Word. So it gives you a bold, a bold text. Beautiful. Uh, there's another tag called the italics tag. Italics or italics, like some of you would pronounce it. Uh, it's the I tag, it's noted by I. So I just type in I and I also complete, okay? So this is in it leaks. It leaks, it leaks. This is in it leaks. So this is like doing control I on your Microsoft Word. So let me reload. This is in it leaks. Isn't this amazing? There's something I want us to pay attention to. Some of you may have not noticed and maybe because you are not given the opportunity to to speak at the moment uh you may notice something everything we've been writing so far all of them seem to stay on their own right up until the paragraph tag but all of a sudden these guys are staying beside each other what's going on this is not this is not how we planned it now this is what is going on exactly there are two levels of html elements two levels okay two levels of HTML elements. The first level is called block level elements. Block level elements. Now, block level elements are, what's the best example I can use? Stingy people. Those elements are like stingy people. So they take up the whole space. Watch this. Although this guy only needs this amount of space. But in the real sense of it, this hello world is actually taking up from here, from the beginning of hello world to this place. That's the way block level elements behave. They take up the entire space on the line that they are currently on. That's block, ele block level elements for you. So all header tags are actually block level elements, every single one of them. So from H1 to H6, they are block level elements, block level elements. Even the paragraph tag is also a block level element. The second level of element is what you would call inline level. Inline level element. Inline level elements. Don't worry, I know some of you have a lot of questions. I'm going to hopefully before the end of the class, we'll have like at least 10 to 20 minutes just for questions and interactions and things like that. We have inline level elements. Now, your inline level elements only take up the space they need to take up. So this bold tag, for example, this B tag, 
only takes up this space and then allows the italic tag to take up this space. So inline level elements can stay beside each other. Block level elements, no way, no way. Their territory is their territory. Nobody else can, can stay beside them. So that's why you are seeing the kind of erratic behavior you are seeing at the moment. These things can be changed, of course. So you can make a block level element an inline level element. But you do more of that, hopefully, when you get to CSS. You do more of that in CSS. Now, let me truly prove to you, so that you know I'm not lying, that these guys are actually taking up the whole space. Uh, this is not CSS class, but I'm going to attempt to use a CSS property, OK? It's not a CSS class, but I'll use a CSS property. I just want to show you that this guy takes up this whole space, OK? So I'm going to go back to my code. And where properties go in is in the open tag. Some call them attributes, some call them properties. But whatever they are, you, they put them inside of the open tag. So this is the way they, it basically works. Your, your carbonated drink, for example, is still majorly water, right? They just changed some properties. So they changed the color, they, they ensured that it was carbonated, right? They added a lot of sugar from what I read. So they just changed some properties and then that made it Fanta. But somehow that entire thing is still majorly water. The entire Fanta bottle is still majorly water. So that's the way attributes and properties work too. So I can have an H1, but I can make that H1 look different. It's still an H1 element. But I'm just giving it different properties and attributes. So it looks different. Now, so apply properties or attributes. You just go into the open tag. I differentiated between the open tag and the closing tag the other time. I said, it's the closing tag that has the slash. The open tag doesn't. So you go into the open tag right after the name of the element, right here. You put a space. And because this is going to be a CSS property. Remember, I said CSS property. CSS means cascading style sheets, right? So I'm going to call on style, style, style. Is a three-step process. Follow me. You go into your open tag. You click on. You type style, and you don't even have to type it completely. Just click here to auto complete. Auto complete. The moment you type in style, the next thing it will ask you is, oh. Now I understand you want a different style for me. What's the name of that style going to be? Or what property do you want to change about me? So now we are going to say, I want to change the background color. And remember, I don't have to type this completely. Once I type something like back, it brings out background color. So I'm saying, I want to change the background color of this yellow world. I can auto complete by just clicking on it. And the next thing is going to ask me is this. What background color do you want to change? Or what background color would you have me be? Or what background color do you want to give me? I can say, I want your background color to be red. And we are done. Three-step process. I'll come again for some of us that may, may have been lost. Simply come into the open tag, put a space, type in the keyword style. You don't have to type it completely. You auto complete and then type background color. So you don't have to type that completely either. Auto complete it and then put in the background color you want. So in this case, I want red right after the column. I want red as the background color. If I go back to the page and reload, voila, red. Now notice this hello world is actually ending here, right? But notice how it's taking up this whole space. I'm revealing this because I'm giving it a background color. So you can see it's starting from here and ending here, taking up the whole space. Although the text ends here, it's taking up the whole space. And that's because it's a block level element. And that's the way they behave. That's the way they truly behave. I'm going to show us just three properties. We can research more on more properties, but I believe that the instructor that will take us tomorrow will take us solely on properties too, as you'll be looking into CSS tomorrow. But I'll just show us three, three very interesting ones. The second one I want to show you is color. So I showed you background color. I want to show you color. So come into the open tag of the H2. 
And the first step is you put a space and then you type in style, style. So I type style. And then from here, I can specify, I don't want to change the background color. I want to change the color. And I'll explain what the difference is. Color, auto-complete it, and then specify the color. So I want the color to be, let's say green, green for Nigeria. I go back to my browser, I reload, and then see, I have green. So what's the difference between the background color and the color? The background color changes, well, the color of the background. The color on the other hand changes the color of the text. Are you with me? The background color changes the color of the background or wherever the, the entire element is staying. Color on the other hand changes the color of the text. Color on the other hand changes the color of the text. I'll show us one last one. Just one last one. Just one last one. And I'll come into the H3. I'll type in style. And this is going to be text align. Text align. So autocomplete. And the value is going to be center. Center. Let me go back to my browser. Text align center. I'll go back to my browser and reload. So you see what this does. You see that it's aligning it to the center. So by default, it's aligned to where? The left. Some of you have to do this to know which one was left or right. It's fine. It's not an issue. So by default, it was aligned to the left. But now we have it at the center. So to do that, just come to style, the open tag of any element, text align and center. Style, text align, and center. Let's look at some other tags very quickly so we can, we can round up on things. Uh, we have the del tag, D-E-L, D-E-L. So I'll just type a bit of text into it. So this is a strike through. Don't worry. You see what it does now. So I'm going to go back to my browser, DL, type in whatever you want. Go back to my browser, reload, and see a strike through. So what, what is a strike through used for? You must have seen this on Jumia on Konga. So they tell you the price used to be 4,000 Naira. Now it's 2,000 Naira. So they strike through that 4,000 Naira. That's how they do that kind of effect. I'll go back and then. I'll have my INS tag, INS tag. And I'll just type in underline me. Go back to my browser, reload. And what the INS underline, <laughs> what the INS tag does is it helps you to underline whatever you put inside. Helps you to underline whatever you put inside, okay? Uh, we also have, the Q tag. So this is a quote. This is a quote. And I'm going to reload. And notice, I didn't have to type this quote. I just wrapped it around the Q tag. So that's what the Q tag can do for you. There's a very interesting one. I must, I must not take this class without introducing you to that one. It's called a marquee tag. A marquee tag. And notice this one comes with some attributes predefined. But I'm going to go into the open and the closing tag, between the open and the closing tag. And I'm going to type turn it on your own. Now, I don't know if you are aware of, there was a particular video that was trending at one point in time. And uh, the guy said, I don't know what the car do, the car, the car is touring. I don't know what the car do, the car, the car is turning on your own. So this is a representation of on your own. I'm just, you can type in anything you want here, but you're going to see the reason I, I used Tony on your own for this. I'll go back to the browser. I'm going to reload and see that the text is Tony on your own. 
No one is moving it, but the text is turning on its own. That's what a marquee tag does for you. That's what a marquee tag does for you. You can change some of the attributes. You can change the direction, for example. So if I wanted to, by default, it was going towards the left, right? If I wanted it to go to the right, I'll just change the direction to, to right. And I reload. Now it's going towards the right. The text is turning on its own. Interesting. Like I said earlier, these are not all the tags. And we cannot cover all the tags. Time will not permit us to do that. But this is just an introduction. So we understand the basic concepts. We can use to give us a form of push to actually learn further. Let's do something very, very important in programming as a whole, not just HTML, but in programming as a whole. And it's called commenting. Commenting. So if I come to these quotes and control and forward slash, so I type control, I press on the control key and forward slash, it does something very weird for me. It does all of these and turns it to gray. Your own might be gray, your own might be whatever color. But what I just did is I added a comment. If I go back to the code now, to the web browser, sorry. So see, this is the code is there. If I reload, it doesn't exist anymore. It just disappears. Now, what does this comment do? Although it's still in your code, it doesn't reflect on the browser. So if per adventure you ever need to do something, you want to leave a comment for other developers to look at, you want to be more explanatory, okay? So you want to explain what this line of code does to other developers, then you can, you can comment that piece of code. You can comment that piece of code. So that's the beauty. If I want to undo this now, the same way you did it, you undo it. So just control and uh, forward slash, you have your quotations back. Anyone wants to say some, something? I'm hearing, I'm hearing a mic that is on. All right, I believe not. Let's move into, our time is fast paced. Let's move into another section of what we have today, okay? So we've, we've talked about the common HTML tags. See, I didn't mention span or div or HR or BR, right? But I trust that a word is enough for the wise. You can always try this out and see what they do. That's fine. I've also treated some common properties. So we did text align, we did background color, we did color, and we did commenting. Very shortly, we are going to do what a list is. Hmm. This is interesting. We are going to do what a list is. For this, I want us to create another HTML file. Okay? It's very simple. So just come here in the Explorer. You can create a new file by clicking on this icon. Don't be lost. Click on the icon and type in the name of the file. So this one is going to be list.html. List, and then you end it with the extension name, .html. Enter. So this is blank. I want to start off on a blank page for this particular one. Don't worry, this one did not disappear. It's saved already. Okay, you can always go back to it at any point in time. And of course, to begin an HTML page, I need to initialize. Okay, so my exclamation mark, and then I can press this to auto complete. I can press enter or tab or just tap on this, right? From the fresh page. I can also indent. So I'll highlight from my open head to my closed body and press tab. I light from open head to closed body and press tab. So now we are good to go with the list. And let me open up this on my browser too. So I'm going to go back to my file explorer right here. Can you see that? We have the list.html. I'll just double click and open in browser. And notice it's entirely empty because, well, we've not typed in anything. So we expect it to be empty. In fact, it would be weird if it was not empty. We should be scared it's not empty. Now in HTML, there are four types of lists, okay? Four types of lists. We're not going to go through all of them. I'll go through about two. 
and then we'll leave it at that. So types of lists, at least we've tried with two, right? You have the ordered list. You have what is called an ordered list. You have what is called descriptive list. If time permits me, maybe I'll go over some of these, but I want to ensure that we cover this and we don't spend more than two hours, okay? We have descriptive lists. We have the nested list. So ordered lists, unordered list, descriptive list, and nested list. We are going to start with, let's start with unordered, okay? So I'm going to go to my code. To create an unordered list, you use the keyword O-L, unordered, sorry, U-L, unordered list. So it's more like an acronym, U-L, unordered list. And then you click on this to autocomplete. Now, the goal is that any unordered list that you want to have here goes in between the open tag and the closing tag. So I can press enter, so watch very closely. I'm in between the open tag and the closing tag. I can press enter to expand it and I can begin to list things. You know what a list is? I'm just writing out things in a form of order. So let's say you want to go to the market, for example, you want to buy rice, yam, fish, oats, all of those things. So you can bring out your pen and your paper and you begin to list it. That's what we're trying to achieve with this. So I'll come again to create an unordered list, UL. And then you can expand this UL, just press enter. And then you can now begin to list the things, to list those things you want to list. Just press LI, LI, autocomplete it. And the list begins to go in here. So this is what we are going to do. We we'll attempt to, to cook. We we'll attempt to cook something very delicious. So right after this body, I will first create an H1. And then I'll call it list of things to buy to make jollof rice. Did I spell it jollof or I should spell it jollof? Jollof rice. So I have an H1 that says list of things to buy to make jollof rice. And then this is my list. I've not written out the list. So write out the list just in between your li the open tag of your li and the closing tag of your li you cannot begin to list those things so to make jello rice for example i need rice of course yeah jello <laughs> you can you can either have jello or you can have jello there's a difference so to make jello rice or jello rice we need rice so add another thing to the list i'll just expand this and add li so everything you need to list out goes into the li for jello rice we need a uh, granite oil right granite oil for jello rice we also need so i'm going to add another li we need salt because how do you want to cook jello rice without salt so make jello rice we also need maggi Maggie. Ah, uh, let's test this out and see what we've written so far before we go too far. So we have rice, granite oil, salt, and Maggie to make jello. Ah, uh, Maggie or Maggie? Whatever. <laughs> whether it's your Maggie or Maggie or, or seasoning, whatever okay. it is. Right. Okay. So I know it's food. That's why you're interested. If it's not food, then it was something else. You will not have talked. Of course not. Everybody should like food. <laughs> food life matters. So, it's, it's, it's actually very important. Food is important. So we have these guys. So let's check it out and how it looks on our page. So I'm going to go back to my browser, okay? And I'm going to reload that list.html. Voila. We have list of things to buy to make jello fries. I have rice, granite oil, salt, and maggi. And if you look very closely, I didn't have to add this bullet point because I said it was going to be an unordered list. HTML helped me to add this bullet point. 
HTML helped me to add this bullet point. So that's the beauty of using a list. It's going to help you to add bullet points. Now, beyond adding bullet points, I can, what if I want to have something square? So I don't want bullet points. I want square, square points, SpongeBob square points. I want square points. You can change that in the property. Nice. So you can come into, <laughs> you can come into the open tag of the UL and the type style. And then you type list style type. So the property, the name of the property is list style type. And this guy has a lot, a lot of properties, okay? One of the most common property is square. So I can say style, list style type, and I want it to be square. So if I go back to the browser and reload, notice these guys are now SpongeBob square, square point. It rhymes with pint. Pants, SpongeBob <laughs> Square, SpongeBob Square points. All right, so we have square points. Just come into the open tag of your UL, uh, call your style tag. Of course, you don't have to type this completely, just autocomplete, and then list style type and square. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so we have square. Uh, really, there are lots of styles you can have. <laughs> they are very, very funny ones. I dare you to search them up. The list style type you can have for another that list. There are lots of them. Uh, let's move on to ordered list. Our time is fast spent. Let's move on to ordered list. So to create an ordered list, let me have an H4 here, and I'm going to call that steps to cooking jellof rice. Now, for something like an unordered list, of course, with the way it sounds, it said it's unordered, right? It doesn't need to have a form of order. So it doesn't matter if I buy rice first or if I buy granola toy. It really doesn't matter. They don't have to follow in, in steps. I can decide to buy salt first. But when it comes to steps to cooking jollof rice, my dear brothers and sisters, you definitely don't want to add what, what, what could possibly go wrong. You know, some people don't know how to cook jello fries. So maybe they'll put the pot on fire and then they wear the rice first. No granola, no pepper, no water, no nothing. They just put the rice. I remember a story a while back. So apparently some people think for you to make fried rice, you literally have to fry the rice. I'll, I'll use name to cover the person's secrets. But... These steps to cooking, my point is these steps to cooking jello fries, they are very important. So they have to be ordered, right? You can't just decide to arrange them anyhow. To create an ordered list, use OL. OL, ordered list. Very easy to remember, right? And then the list goes in between the open tag and the closing tag of this OL. So I can decide to expand this. And I can begin to list them out. So the first thing I want to do is this <laughs> turn on the gas very important very important now this is the very scary part uh it's not going to be accurate because some of you feel like now that i've turned on the gas i didn't even light it but it's not going to be very accurate okay this is not is that a cooking class the coding class so li the next step is now going to be let's say let's just for the purpose of it so that you know it's me uh Light it up, okay? Uh, the next step, maybe pour your granite oil. Then the next step, maybe add your onions, okay? Now, these are the steps to preparing Nigerian jollof rice, okay? Not Ghanaian jollof rice. Uh, let's check out these steps and see what it looks like on our browser, okay? So I'm going to reload. And then see, I have steps to cooking jello fries. So number one, turn on the gas. Number two, light it up. Number three, pour your granola. oil. Number four, add your onions. Now we didn't have to type one, two, three, four. HTML automatically did that for us. 
because we said it was going to be an ordered list. So it gave us a form of order. That's what happens when you use an ordered list. It begins to order it for us. So in your own scenario, you may be asking, what if I wanted to start from ABC? Well, that's fine. It's not an issue. Just come to your OL, the open tag, and type in type. Type. Now, in type, you can define the type. So I can say I wanted to start with capital letter A. I wanted to start with small letter A. I wanted to start with uh, Roman italics or capital Roman italics, small Roman italics. So let's test out A first, small. Uh, come back here, reload. You see that A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Uh, I can also say start from Roman, Roman, Roman numerals, I. So that's going to be I, 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 V, 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 I, Lecky, and all the likes. So when you say you want it to be started in Roman numerals, it gives you in, in Roman numerals. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Can, can you hear me? Someone is saying you cannot hear anything. No. So let me be sure that I've not been speaking to the clouds. Uh, we can still hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. Please, if you can hear, please indicate in the chat section or you can just unmute your mic and say, I can hear you. Oh, thank okay. you. Oh, thank you, very, thank you very much. I'm loud and clear. I'm glad I'm loud and clear. Awesome. All right. So we have done all that list. I would have loved to discuss the other types of lists, but because of our time, we can't, okay? Let's just move on to other things. Like I said, I gave a disclaimer. That's why I gave a disclaimer at the beginning of the class. I'm not here to teach you everything HTML or everything CSS. The classes that we have scheduled are not going to be sufficient for that. But we believe and we hope that this is going to be a form of starter class and it's going to help you to hold on to something really tangible when it comes to programming and coding and web development as a whole. So we've done lists. Uh, let's look into multimedia. Once we look at multimedia, we'll cover this and then we'll go into the question session, okay? Now, all of this that I'm taking, in fact, the, the curriculum for these sections have been structured in such a way that you are being taught everything you need for the final day. Okay, so the final day, which is the third day, is going to be a live coding class. And we are going to be combining some of these things that we've been teaching throughout the first day and the second day to make a complete website. Okay, so ensure that you pay attention and then you follow along. Let's look a little into multimedia. Uh, multimedia. So I'm just going to have an H1 and say gallery, <laughs> just for the purpose of it. H1 and say gallery. Multimedia is simply a collection of media, right? Media can be videos, it can be audios, it can be songs, it can be anything, really, as long as it's media. Uh, how do I bring in, the most important question is, how do I bring in an image into my web page? Image, how do I bring in a song? How do I bring in a video and things like that? Hopefully I'll touch two of them and then we can figure out the rest on our own. The first thing we want to do is this. I can create a folder. This is not compulsory for you to do, but remember we are trying to also teach standards, standards that you should follow when it comes to coding and programming. So you should have a folder, right? Right inside of where you created those HTML files, just create a folder. And sometimes people call it assets. Sometimes they call it, you can call it any name you want. But I'm going to call it multimedia. You can call it assets too. A lot of people prefer to call it assets, but for the purpose of this class, we'll call it multimedia, okay? Now, inside of this multimedia folder is where our pictures, our videos, our song goes into. Our pictures, our videos, our song, it goes into that multimedia folder. So. I'm going to find an image that we're going to use, okay? I'm going to find an image we're going to use on my PC. No. Uh, so I think I have, yes, I have this guy here. 
that picture that I used to illustrate some things to us. It's called big picture. I wonder why it's called big picture. But that's fine. So I just copied. I used Control C. I just copied an image. Copy however you know. And then I want to paste it inside of the multimedia folder. I copied an image. Uh, I can copy a song too. So maybe I'll do a song. And then you figure out some of these things. I'm going to copy a song. Also back into that GDG folder, GDG HTML folder. A song into that multimedia folder, okay? And a video, maybe a video into that multimedia folder. So GDG HTML multimedia folder, a video. So I have a song, I have a video, I have an image, beautiful. So back in my code, to display an image, I use the IMG tag, IMG. IMG stands for image, you know? People like to think that developers are very, very hardworking people. They are, don't, don't get me wrong, but they also don't like unnecessary stress. So why type image when you can type IMG? So they gave that tag IMG. We auto complete. And this is what we should get. If you notice, your IMG does not have a closing tag. It is actually what you call a self-closing tag. It doesn't have a closing tag. I mentioned it the other time. And I call them hoodlums. That there are some HTML tags that don't have closing tags. About 10% of HTML tags don't have closing tags. And the image happens to be one of them. Now, the image comes in with two attributes by default, the SRC and the ALT. So ALT and SRC, don't be scared of these things. SRC simply stands for source. So it's saying, oh, I understand you want me to display an image, but where is this image going to come from? Okay. Since inside of our folder directory, we created another folder, we called it multimedia. We can come right here and tell it that, guy, go into the multimedia folder. There is a multimedia folder currently where you are. Go inside of that multimedia folder, open it to do that, to ask it to open it. You just had a forward slash. So open up that multimedia folder and there you will find, thank God for Visual Studio Code. He's already telling us the files we have there. There you'll find this big hyphen picture.png. You see that? Go into this multimedia folder, open this for us, and there you'll find this image. So that's where the source is. That's where you know the image is coming from. Let me test this out in my browser. So I'm going to reload, and voila, we get that <laughs> we get that skeleton image. That my beautiful HTML, CSS, JavaScript skeleton image. Now, for some of you, this image may be quite large, right? And you are wondering, how can I reduce the size? Well. We're not going to go into details about size, but I'm going to do a bit of it here. Still inside of this image tag, we can add another attribute called width. So I can specify how wide I want it to be. Now, the standard unit of measurement for most developers, you can decide to use inches, or you can decide to use feet or centimeters or meters, but oftentimes we use pixels. Pixels is denoted by PX. So I can say this should be 200 pixels for the width. Right here too, I can define an height for it. So I can say, I want it to also be 200 pixels high. So a width of 200 pixels and height of 200 pixels. Let me go back to the page and reload it. And voila, you can see it's much smaller now. So this is what 20 by 20 pixels looks like. Ah, uh, I didn't upload the image. This is what we did. We just brought in an email image tag. We specified the source. So we created a folder inside of that folder called multimedia. We copied image, video, and song into it. And then we called on their name. So we said, currently where you are, you see a multimedia folder. You open up that multimedia folder and then you see this image. So that's what we did. That's what we did. Alternatively, if you want to have a song, you use the audio tag. So I'm not going to show us for video, 
but the song and video are pretty similar, okay? Song and video are pretty similar. So Mr. What's the name? Uh, let me check this. Okay, Mr. or Mrs. IMD. If you get for the audio, you get, you understand for the image too. So is this audio tag is also asking me, where is the source? Okay, where do you want me to get this from? We can also see, look right into where you currently are. You see a multimedia folder, so multimedia. And remember, this is actually case sensitive. So if you name your own multimedia starting with the capital letter, please ensure you use the capital letter here. Hence, or else it won't actually, it won't see it. So go into the multimedia folder, open it up, and pick this audio. Pick this audio. Now, the beautiful thing about this is this. If I go back to the browser and reload, I'm not going to see the song. Now, the song is there, but I'm not going to see it. Now, what's the reason for this? You know, naturally, when you go to a website and then you see a song, there's usually a form of control. So you see the play button, the volume button, all of those guys. Those guys don't come in by default to the audio tag. You have to add them. So still inside of the properties, I can add controls. Controls. So I want to be able to see the play button, the volume button, and things like that. Controls. Okay? So now if I reload, I get to see the song. I wonder how we can see song. Hmm. But then some people can hear somebody walking the middle of the garden. So if I play this, this song should, should start playing. It should start playing. So I can increase the volume, reduce the volume. I can increase the playback speed, amongst other things. I'm not going to go into details into this, but there are other attributes you can add to this audio tag. So attributes like loop. So if you want it to play once it's done, you want it to play it again, then you add a loop. There's also attributes like autoplay. You notice how that on some websites, you go to some website and then you notice that the video just starts playing by itself. You didn't click on the play button. This is what they use for it, autoplay. Autoplay. <clears throat> I know our time is fast paint, but I would just love to show us this because it's not very difficult. So if I want to use a YouTube image, sorry, a YouTube video in my web page, I just go to youtube.com. Very quickly, the network will allow me. Oh, I wonder what will happen if I if I pick up our live coding session and then display it. So I click on the video I want to display on my web page. And right here, right here, I click on share. Once I click on share, you see something called embed. Now, before this class, some of you were not familiar with this greater than and less than sign or angle brackets, but now you should be familiar, they're HTML tags. So you click on them and it gives you an HTML tag that you can use. So I'm just going to copy all of this, all right? Come in. I'm going to copy all of this and paste it in my code. So just go to share, embed, copy everything you can see there, that iframe tag, paste it in your code. So I'm going to paste it right after this audio. And I'm going to reload. And I have that YouTube video. See that? Right on my web page. Very, very straightforward. Very, very straightforward. Now, for video, I'm not going to do it. But you're going to practice it as one of the things you want to practice. Just use a video. There's a video tag. And it just asks for the source. So you specify the source and then you're passing the controls so that you can be able to play your video. That's all. That's all that is required. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next phase. I want to talk about anchor tags, buttons, select, and option. Anchor tags, buttons, select, and option. Hopefully, if we still have enough time for that. So we have an anchor tag. An anchor tag is simple, okay? The concept of an anchor tag is this. So you see this YouTube page, for example, or let me open up um, this. This YouTube page, for example, we have all of these links. 
So if I go to explore, I can see explore, right? So it takes me to the explore page. If I go to shorts, it takes me to YouTube shorts page. All of these things are simply links that are opening other HTML pages, okay? So what if I want to achieve something like that? So I want to go from a page to another page. I simply use the anchor tag. The anchor tag is noted by A. A for anchor. Say we have A for Apple, you have A for anchor in HTML. So this is what an anchor tag looks like. In between the open tag and the closing tag of an anchor tag, I can specify what I want the name of the anchor to be. So in this case, I can say link to index. So this is what we're trying to achieve. When they click on this anchor tag, it should take them to this index page. Remember that index page we created from the beginning. When we click on this anchor tag, take us to the index page. Now in the href, which stands for reference to your HTML page, we can now specify where we want it to go to. So when they click on this link, where do I want them to go to? I can say, just simply go to index.html. Now for you, this can be www.instagram.com slash your username. It can be any link that you want. So it can be google.com. It can be any link that you want. And when you click on it, it takes you to that, that link. Let's test this out. Uh, where's my browser? I'm going to reload and see, we have that link somewhere. If it did not run away. Yes, somewhere down here. <laughs> somewhere down here, we have this link. So this link to index. I click on this link and voila, see, it takes me to that index page. That's the beauty. I click on that link, it takes me to the index page. That's the beauty of an anchor tag. Now, you can also have a button. A button is also a tag. And I can call this click me. <laughs> click me. Let me reload the page so we can see what this is like, OK? So this is what a button looks like, just, just a regular button that you can click on. Uh, for now, it doesn't do anything. But we both know we can click on it. So this is what a button does. This is what a button does, OK? Uh, you can change different properties about that button. So I can try to change the background color. So I can say style, background color, <clears throat> green. I'll reload and voila, see, we have a green, a green button, just like, just like Nigeria, the flag of Nigeria, we have a green button. Uh, the last thing I have on my list is select an option, select an option, okay? So select an option allows you to choose between a range of options. The entire topic is under something called forms, which we did not touch today because we are not going to need it for the website we're about to build. But like I said, I gave a disclaimer, we can't touch everything. So to write select an option, you simply type select, you autocomplete, and in between the open tag and the closing tag, you expand it by pressing the enter button. And you can begin to type in your options. So what is this guy for precisely? I can, let me have a paragraph tag before this that says, choose your gender. Choose your gender, okay? We both know, or we all know that you have a limited amount of gender, kind of. You have male, you have female, and then you have, I'm not sure, and then you have some other ones. So to specify all of those options, I'm just going to come in here and say option, male. To add another option, I'll type option, female. No, not inside of the value, in between the open tag and the closing tag, female. And I'll have one last option. I'll call it others. So in between the open tag and the closing tag, others. OK? So what does this look like precisely? I'm going to reload and see, voila, we have this. I'm sure we've seen this on a web page before, whereby you have, you know, get to choose between a couple of options, especially maybe when you want to register your SIM. And they ask you, which country are you from? You have to pick from a list of countries. 
So that's how they do things like that. So if you want to achieve an effect like that, that's what you need. That's what you need. Uh, one last thing. Like I said, I'm not going to go into forms, but I'll just show us one other thing. So what if you want to have a form of input where the users can type in something? You can also have an input tag, auto-complete it, and that's basically it. I go back to the web browser, reload, and I have an input tag. So I can begin to now type maybe my name, Lua Shei, or Dekomaya, or something like that. Like I said earlier, there is more to this, and I wish there was more time. But then, of course, you can cover everything in three days. Uh, this whole thing that we are taking, that we are attempting to take in three days, is actually an entire course. So if you attend schools like SKI College of ICT, this is an entire course, OK? HTML, CSS, uh, Git, and some other things. If you attend ELX, Decagon, these are entire courses. These are not things that should be taught within two hours. But we are trying to do our best to, to just understand some basic concepts within, within two hours. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I think I've completed everything I have on my checklist. And this is 5.48. I believe I was given two hours. Two hours. I've completed everything on my list. And I think I'd love to take questions now. So if we have any questions, this is the perfect time for us to ask. If you have any questions, this is the perfect time for us to ask before we, we take a bow and, and leave. Yes, please. If you have any questions as regards the session I've had so far, please can you just uh, unmute your mic or just type it on the chat section so that we can mm -hmm. attend to it. So you can unmute your mic, you can. You can unmute your mic and speak. You can reply through chats. Anyone you're more comfortable with? Uh, uh, channel, uh, do you have any question here? Okay. Uh, I don't think so. I wonder what will happen if I'm watching me, watch me. Oh, this is what I look like. Interesting. <laughs> Great. Do we have questions? 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 I'm watching me, watch me. So awkward. So, so awkward. Any questions, please feel free to speak. Feel I free to. Um, there are no questions. All right. Um, Mr. Yomide, are you, I don't even know whether it's Mr. or Miss, but I hope you had a great time this afternoon, this evening. Uh, there's a question from Smart. I don't okay. know if that is uh, Miss or Mister. Can I message you later in the day? Uh, I'm not sure my phone number is is given out, but of course you can if you can have access to my phone number. I can type my phone number. That's fine. It's not an issue. Uh, In case you want to reach out, that's fine. So 0810 I hope you really, really had an amazing time. So Mr. or Mrs. Smart, if you want to reach out, that's fine. That's my, that's my phone number. Then per adventure, maybe we missed some parts. Uh, this is available on YouTube. So you can go check it out, watch again. And uh, yeah, you can check it out, watch again, and practice. It's absolute pleasure. So if we don't have any questions, um, over to, let's say over to the moderator.
Yeah, go over to the moderator. Thank you very much. Stop sharing my screen. It was I sm it's my absolute really pleasure. And uh, I'm glad it was. I've gained a lot. And even though I'll put the link on the YouTube to like watch the tutorial again, I think it's actually a masterpiece that you've presented so far. I want to appreciate it. Thank you, man. It's my absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much for presenting.